call the Columbia County Board of Commissioners meeting to order for this June the 2nd. I ask Commissioner Allen to open us with an invocation. Thanks, sir. If you'd all please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening to do what is hopefully right and good in your sight for the citizenry of Columbia County. We ask that you be with us in both our words, our thoughts, our actions, and our deeds as we go forth tonight to try to serve the people that have elected us to be here. We thank you for the countless blessings that you have offered upon us to live in this great community and this great nation. We ask that you be with so many people throughout our nation and now throughout the world that are hurting, that feel that they are they're not being heard. We ask that you be with those that also are trying their very best to, to just hold on to what they have. We ask that peace be over our nation and over our land and that the division and, and the anger diminish on both sides and safety reign. We ask these things in your name. Please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, Republic of Peru, one nation, God, visible, liberty. Let the record show we have a full quorum of commissioners. Commissioners, you have the minutes from the previous meeting of May the 19th in your package. If you approval, I'll accept the motion to do so. Motion to accept. Second. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Also, you have the meetings from the budget hearing from May 19th. And same request. If they meet, I'll accept the motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. And we'll just want to welcome everyone to the Board of Commissioners meeting. And especially, I believe we have two candidates here. Bob Willis, Bob, are you here, Bob? And Don Skinner, both candidates for the commission. We're glad you guys are here. We do have under special recognitions and, and uh, presentations some folks that have requested to speak. So what we're going to do is move those down to speak on the issue or better yet, when we get to your issue, so that uh, you don't just speak now and then an hour later we get to it. So bear with me. I, I have a list, and um, Bruce Crawley will correct me if I miss it. Thank you. Commissioners, you have the consent agenda in front of you. It's full of items that have been through committee and received the necessary votes to be placed on the consent agenda. If they still, if that still meets with your pleasure, I'll accept a motion to approve them all as one vote. Motion to accept. Second. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Right into the debate agenda. We'll go straight to Commissioner Allen. Sir, <clears throat> regarding the rezone uh, RZ20209, rezone from R2 to P1, I make a motion to deny the rezoning from R2 to P1 for property located at a tax map of 073B004. Second. Locker. This was going to be a uh, tax service that was originally applied for a home op. However, the owner did not actually live in the house, or the owner of the business didn't live in the house. Um, we've gone radio silent on this. We have not had any contact with the property owner or the owner of the business. Okay. Any questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. I would like to make a motion to deny the variance request for property located at tax map 073B004. Second. Okay. Variance for that, the one you just denied, this was a variance to go along with it. So no Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. I make a motion to approve the request for rezoning from C2 to C3 for property located at tax map 07408. Seven. Second. Be for a contractor's office. They currently own two parcels immediately adjacent to this parcel. This would be parcel connectivity to allow them to build out these two different parcels. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion. approve the variances to section 90-98 list of lot and structure requirements 
Section 90-139, Buffers and Screening, and Section 90-147H1C. Use provisions for property located at tax map 074087, subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission. Second. Doctor. This is a variance for that parcel that was just rezoned. Uh, they do have a 20-foot requirement, if you can see on the screen, that does abut to some storage sheds, so they're reducing the buffer down to a 10-foot buffer. Heavier landscaping up around the, the parking lot. What's already allowed on the pre-road parcels next door. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. I make a motion to approve Second, we are with Major S1, tax map. I apologize, my, my packet is not lining up. I make a motion to approve the request of a major revision to the existing S1 zoning for a portion of property located at tax map 036023A, subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission report. For a sawmill to be used as a larger lot, they're looking to use two acres of this lot for a sawmill. <laughs> owner actually has a um, office out of county where he gets a lot of material to use instead of going to the landfill. Trees and a, a out and actually come to the sawmill. He can saw them. That for, I believe he told us at the planning commission he uses it for trailer lumber. Trailers, saw cuts that type of lumber, so it'll be a personal use sawmill, not a pollard lumber type sawmill. Trailer mounted saw that can go around, but it's two acres of the, belief, I, I believe it's a 19 acre parcel, only two acres of that actually operating. Neighbors have a problem? I've, I've been made aware Burns. of it. was here at the planning commission. Can I, can I ask you a question? Does this affect the uh, boat sheds that were approved back in 09, I believe? Uh, does that go away with this or it, they could still? So the remainder, the remainder can still, okay. All questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. I believe the next item, Mr. Bill Knoll. You have a uh, presentation? Yes, sir. Let me see what <clears throat> You'll just state your name and address for the record, sir. And okay, I'm Bill Noel, N-O-L-L. I live at uh, 200... Let me get, get my... Uh, I live at 2006 Egret Circle in Evans, and I'm representing uh, the townhome owners in River Island on, on this uh, one subject. Uh, the purpose of this PUD was to reduce building setbacks for individual lots in, on Egret Circle. Uh, the staff recommendation came back that the setback at 210, 212, and 214 remain at five feet. The Planning Commission disagreed with the staff recommendation and went ahead and passed it to say, yes, we can get, get rid of the setback. Uh, this is the area that we're talking about. This is Egret Circle. If you can see in the middle of it, there's a green space that runs down the middle of it. On the left-hand side, uh, there are uh, four, four houses on one side and three on the other. All of these houses have the same setback. And, the, of course, they have a, a, a sidewalk that runs down each one of those because the, the front of the houses face the green space. Uh, myself and three other owners are on the right side there of the four townhomes that are already there. The part that we're concerned about is that open space at the top there where there's room for three uh, additional townhomes. What the builder developer has proposed is to get rid of that setback and move the town homes, make them five feet bigger, and therefore then moving the sidewalk. And as you can see, well, my drawing there, excuse me, I'm a, it's not always the greatest, but
But basically, they'll take out the four trees that are there already. Now, granted, the developer can plant more trees. But basically, when we sit on our front porch, we get to see that the side of the other townhomes if they extend them another, another five feet there. Uh, now, this is, uh, River Island has about 300 homes in it right now. Uh, this is just two sections. One is the section we live in and the section next to us. All the houses there are about 10 feet apart, so they're fairly close. And I could maybe make these bigger, but I didn't. But if you look, all of these homes have the same setback as the one next to it. So they're all, uh, when you look at them and they're very close together, they, they all have the same setback and have the same view out of the front. The developer proposes that this one building with three townhomes in it would be different from that and have no setback. Uh, this is what they look like right now. The, the one on the left there shows the ones that are currently there. The one on the right shows where the sidewalk is, and it's, it, the, basically they're asking for the townhomes to extend out another five feet and put that jig into the sidewalk uh, and uh, make, make those larger. Now, when I bought in 2017, I asked the developer, what are you going to build next to me? He gave me a stack of drawings that were 12 of them that showed the other three townhomes that are the same size as the one that we're in right now. So I tried to do my homework to make sure that what I was looking at was what we were going to get and what was going to be in the lot next to me. Now the developer wants to make these five feet bigger and encroach on, on the green space that we already have. So this was the drawings that I saw in 2017, and now he's adding five feet, or wants to add five feet to that. Uh, in conclusion, I request that you approve the staff recommendation and not the, the planning commission, and approve uh, the fact that the setback for 210 212 and 214 egret circle remain at five feet and that all the townhomes will look the same and uh, not be a, a five foot additional part there. Now Sunday I did drove through the hole and looked at all 300 homes and there's not one that sat forward or backward more than the others. And that's and so what you'll be approving if you approve the planning commissions uh, to get rid of the setback, you'll have one building out of 300 that has an additional five feet without the, the setback to it. So I'm asking you, just looking at it from a logic standpoint, to keep the setback for these three townhomes. Do you all have any questions? Mr. Schlachter, does anybody here? Matt? Sure. Why the why the move back? Um, well, first and foremost, we developed the original townhomes. Actually, Jimmy Guerin built those townhomes, and coincidentally, planning staffs told me that some of the porches in his section extended the into the five foot set back and are probably in violation. That's what Will Butler told me. We're only talking about porches. There's three units per land here. There's, uh, there's, I had brought a drawing. I didn't know if the planning would have it. Oh, here you are. So we have the porch in the middle that extends out and we have one that this area between the front of the units and the front of the lot is um, 6.8 feet right here. And there's only one porch extending all the way to the line and then one that extends about um, 3.2 feet from the line. So we're talking about two porches here. Um, the units sat on the market a long time, the ones we originally, so we've, we've worked really hard to make better plans. And the better plans, to make a townhome plan good, you want more natural light coming in. So a deeper unit is better than a, than a um, shallower unit because you can put more windows in the courtyard and make a bigger courtyard space, which we've done here, here, and here. Um, 
I don't think you can compare this to the rest of the River Island because these are the only units in this section that back up to a 75 foot wide park. So they're, they're not like every other streetscape. These actual units face the park. And so the view off the front porch, um, the only thing that would obstruct the view they have now is that there'd be one porch that sticks out five feet, which coincidentally, they're in unit. They're already in the five foot setback for this planning staff. So for this reason, we think it's, a, we're gonna, if we take down any trees, we can, pl we can plant back trees that are larger. There's, there's actually, in reworking the sidewalk, there's been, a, there's been a water retainage issue that has been sitting there. We're actually going to repair that. There's a big drain um, that's buried underground that we're gonna fix and tie in some storm drains there at our expense to take care of an a area in the Homeowners Association's um, land that is a problematic. So at the end of the day, we're talking about two porches, one that only is still three foot back and one that extends all the way to the line, but the porches are key to making these units consistent with the other units. And we wanna keep them the same size as the existing units because I feel like if we made them smaller, then they'd sell for a price point that's less than their units and could be a dis, they may not realize it, but there's town I'm selling there for significantly less, they could be, a, um, their, their price of their property could be jeopardized. So we think it's great for the development. We're gonna replace it and do it just as good a job as we did when we initially installed it. And I think we can address all those concerns the end of the day will be a better product and a better place than it is today. So Mr. Mills, are you saying that it's not actually five feet past the existing ones? Well, those lots are deeper than, they're slightly deeper, as, as you can see, they're slightly deeper than his are now. So we just have the porch and this one would be sticking all the way to the property line where it, the, the, his port, this porch here, I believe, extends all the way to the property line. Yes. Only one of the three proposed actually has a feeds the zero sit back. The two flanking it. That's correct. This is the only one that right. would extend. Only all the, the way center. To the this center unit has that center has a, unit. An extended porch. Yeah, and, and and I think you need those porches to keep the elevations. These are units we built in Charleston. They sell quite well and um, very attractive. So they'll be built with similar. Quality, different builder, just because Mr. Garen's no longer with us. But, um, you know, these lots have sat here for 10 years undeveloped. I think everybody in this section wants us to move forward and get done so that it's, and be out of there. And I think if we found a plan that works, and we'll, if, if we'll sell these three and hopefully move on to the others quickly. And, that, and there's an expansive, it's an expansive park. So, really, when you on the porch there, Looking across, you still got a big wide view. Um, I, don't, I don't think it would jeopardize. So, so if it's a porch, it's just a roof over with no sides, or is it sides and a roof? I, we have an elevation, I believe. In the, it, it, they did have one. Oh. I turned it in, but oh, um, no. we don't have the ones. Use some actually. examples. I don't know that they're probably oh, there. They are. So this this is the porch that extends all the way through, and it's a double, it's a double porch. Mr. Knoll, does this uh, help answer some of your concerns? No. I, uh, Is there anything short of denying this completely and putting them all back in a straight line that would come up here so we can get it on the record? One of his comments was that the current townhomes exceeded into the, the uh, setback. That they did, okay, but the total from the front to the back was 112 feet, okay. okay, even when you went in the setback. Now he wants to go into a new setback that's 117 feet. So when he puts that on there, even the side of his building is going to be five feet longer than our building. Okay, without the, when I'm not looking at porches. So he basically is still asking for five feet more than we currently have on the current townhomes. And as I showed you, those apartments, not those houses down below, there wasn't one that came out more than the others. So this, like I said before, this is one where he's got one building that's 
out further than all the other buildings that he's built in there, whether they're in a green space or not. So I'm just looking to make sure we have a standard there and he's, he's putting porches, and actually he's putting, I didn't realize when I looked, well, he's got an upper porch and a lower porch on that one, which additionally blocks some of the view. So all I'm asking is y'all keep a standard that you've used in the past everywhere else and not make this one exception. And remember that the uh, planning commission uh, workers wanted to disapprove this as well. So I guess I don't like to use this dirty word, but it looks like that politics plays something in this, the way they got the Planning Commission to do it. How so? Do you feel like something improper was I I don't put? know, but I cannot see that, that you go and approve something that's different from everything else in the subdivision. Okay. Regarding your, your previous comments, sir, we, we have notes that staff recommended approval with conditions, not disapproval. No. One of the conditions was the five-foot setback is denied. The staff the said the do not approve the five-foot setback. The planning commission disregarded that and changed that. Gotcha. And I'm asking you to go back to what the staff recommended, which is keep the five-foot setback so all the townhomes or the same distance forward into the green belt. That's why I, I, I use the dirty word politics there, because the staff had one thing in the planning commission, something else. That's my comments. Thank you. Sir. We didn't speak to the staff. Are you uh, good with the conditions, the revised conditions as set forth by the planning commission? We were. We asked, we asked that that one be removed, and there, uh, there weren't any politics involved. Al Dempsey was the primary spokesperson, and he said, I still can't figure out anybody's giving me a good reason with a 75-foot park why this we wouldn't allow two porches to be built into it. I don't have a good reason because they named trees being removed. He says, you can replace those. Drainage is a, they named drainage as an issue, and they said, you can fix the drainage. And he said, I just don't see our five-foot porch entering into a big view corridor that exists today makes that much of a difference. And, and, you know, we created everything that's great about that right now. We, we wouldn't do anything. We have more to lose than anybody. We do something that jeopardizes the quality there. So we found a product that I think will help this section move forward and be done with it. And there's a lot of residents there that are tired of looking at vacant lots and dirt. And I think this is, this is a great compromise to make it happen. And I've had multiple land planners tell me that if you have something, if you look out over an ocean, it can be somewhat boring for you. It's a much more interesting view if you've got a tree or something in the foreground. So, I mean, you, know, you could also look at that in response to this, that um, a, the columns, not a wall, but columns sticking out into the part of five foot of your 75 foot view actually add to the view. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oh. Yeah, did you have something? Matt? No, I just said Ms. Carly, could you go to the uh, photographs of the samples that they sent? There's that's a, that's a four-piece unit, but keep going. It actually the full units that have the uh, that actually have the porches on them. Uh, they're drawing. No, no, it's an actual photograph. There's one over the on top of the other. There. So, like this top example here, is this what we're discussing? We're discussing where there's an overhanging porch. In this case, maybe it's not overhanging. But then you have the portico there with a, a lid on it, and then you have the one next to it that has the columns. Is that? Those are identical floor plans. We will use materials that are the same. That has a lot of party board siding and whatnot in different colors. But but Max, architecturally, this is what we're talking this about. This is the floor plan with a little bit slightly different fronts and different materials. I think we'll need to introduce brick to be consistent with the other. But in terms of spacing or depth, this yeah, is spacing right. and okay. depth. So the face of the, the face of the buildings are level, and it, it is truly just this: the first overhanging porch, the second portico, and then the third double porch. Correct. Right. Except in this situation, there's only three. Right. That that helps. Thank you. Heard of the discussion, debate. Was can, there a can, motion? Can I ask, please, Scott? Scott uh, what what was staff's thoughts when they? Recommended that not be 
Yeah, I think in part some of the discussion centered around the fact that they'd already built some of the units and at that depth, you know, could they make that work? And obviously, you know, there was some belief that, you know, clearly it had been done before, so it could be done again. Um, but of course, you know, there are other alternatives you can modify. It is worth pointing out that the original approvals for the units that are on, that have been built uh, do encroach into that five foot setback. Uh, and there is no variance been, that has been granted to reduce that five foot setback. So those porches were, you know, built in the required setback. So part of the reason why they work is because they're not necessarily in you know compliance with our ordinance for that section. So do we need that's, to do a variance request to get Well, those? that's not what's before you tonight. That, that's but a I mean, separate the, issue. Or do we need to do that for... That would be one way to clean up that particular matter. It's a question of whether or not grant the variance tonight to, you know, allow that, you know, shorter uh, distance or do you decide to allow them to have the, you know, the greater depth and build it as he's proposed? Theoretically, if we were to deny this variance and then go forward and to audit the existing structures and deny those variances, they'd have to remove the porches, theoretically? Correct. I'll, I'll defer Builder, to legal. Uh, <laughs> right. Builder is no longer with us. Builder is no longer with us. Please. Uh, when we put the, brought, he brought it up and Mills brought it up both, that the current townhomes extended into the setback, and that, that appears to be true. But what we're looking at now, if you uh, approve going into the new setback, then these new townhomes are still going to be five feet longer than the current ones. Yes, sir. So it, it sort of said, it, when they say that to start with, it assumes, well, if we went to the setback and they go in the setback, they're going to be the same length, and that's not the case. They're still going to be five feet Correct. more longer. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any more discussion? So uh, just to be clear, is is most of whether it's a straight line or not, is it a matter of taste? Is that what I'm hearing? It's all about a view. Argument. He, he, one point he did make was also that the sidewalk will not be straight. The sidewalk will not be straight regardless of how you vote tonight. The sidewalk will have to jog around these buildings because, like he said, the property line is five foot longer on these three parcels than it is on his property. The sidewalk has to turn. That's not really a consideration. Ah. Oh, it, well, it is if you. No, sir. It, they cannot put a way sidewalk cannot be built on that private property. So they will have to take the sidewalk around that private property. Lot sticks out five foot past your lot. The sidewalk, if you look, lines up directly into their property. So they will have to take that HOA sidewalk around that property. If not, the sidewalk will be on private property, and the owner will have to stop anybody from. Not what HOA wants. The side will have to be shifted to keep it on public property or HOA property for the neighbors to use. Hmm. Is there a motion? Yes, sir. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the request. Major PUD revision for property located at tax map 0815795889. Subject to the revised conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission order. Second. Any other discussion or debate? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Carries. On to the next. I'm one A7. I make a motion to approve the request for a major revision to the existing PUD for property located at tax map 073046B. Second. This one is a, a sign that was um, 
taken out by someone who didn't know where the lanes were, I guess. Um, there's currently a water line behind the sign where the sign should go to meet our code. Therefore, we don't want them putting on top of a water line. They're asking for a zero foot setback to put, it'll be on private property, however, it'll be right up against the right of way line. It requires a five foot setback, so this is a variance allowing them to build it without impacting our water line. Discussion? There was no issues other than just the setback. The, the sign actually, the right of way is pretty wide through there, so it's set back a good ways from the travel lane. There's right turn lanes, uh, acceleration lanes, so it, there's Height distance, I think. So it won't get taken out again, maybe. Well, I can't promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> Daughter driving now. Yeah, me too. We've all been warned. <laughs> all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. All right. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve the request for rezoning from R1 and S1. B2. For a portion of property located at tax map 069-008B-101B. Second. I'm, I'm playing catch up. This is um, at the intersection of the new Gateway Boulevard extension and Riceboro Road. This would allow a gas pump service station to go on that corner. They do have more property. However, they're only asking to rezone the front piece. Parcels behind it will as they're currently zoned, they'll come back to us in the future to decide to change. Questions? Mr. Schlocker, can you detail, there are some traffic improvements that are going to go along with the, this project for... There are. The, the, the owner of the property has entered into an agreement with the county to pay for the turn lanes to be put in on the road as we build the turn lanes for Gateway Boulevard Extension. He made it clear whether or not you vote up or down on this project, he wants to put turn lanes in for whatever project he does end up building in the that agreement y'all approved uh, a little while ago, so we'll actually build those turn lanes. And I know you'll address this as they bring in the plans and whatever, but there is a turn lane off of New Gateway Boulevard going into entrance uh, of the station. Is that correct? Uh, Left, left turn lane into left it. turn lane off of off of Gateway Boulevard. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. I know on this next one we've got uh, some folks who want to speak. I'm going to call Mr. Lionel Prather. Tell me you have a presentation. Uh, we still have I one A not. Oh my bad. Sorry. I have one more motion. My bad. For that. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request for variances <coughs> to section 9098, list of lot and structural requirements, 9139, buffers and screening, and 9147G 10B, use provisions for portions of property located at tax map 069008B and 101B, to reduce building setbacks to three feet, waive structural bearer buffer requirements, and waive hours of operation requirements subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission report. Second. Big one here is the um, 24 hour a day use. That use is not allowed full time during the day. Parents will be allowed them to stay open 24 hours a day. Setbacks are allowed for the dumpster pad to be up against that adjoining parcel that is either plan on developing in the future. That is not an issue. Any of the neighbors complain? Nobody close. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Now I'm caught up to item 10. So, pray that I believe you have a all over. <coughs> and we have three other people who want to speak. Evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. I mean, this is my planner. I'm letting him do my presentation for me. Thanks. Bad answer question. Thank you. I figured y'all recognized that I was not Lionel Prather. <laughs> <laughs> was that like a switching bait and switch thing going on here? Please state your name and address for the records. And you have five minutes, sir. 
Okay, uh, my name is Wallace Milling. I am with Whitmer Jones Kiefer. You have two fine children. I have two fine children. Well, I actually have three. That's just before the third one came along. Um, and uh, I'm with Whitmer Jones Kiefer. We're in Bluffton, South Carolina. We're planners and landscape architects, as Lionel mentioned. And we're here to share with you very briefly uh, the vision uh, for Greenpoint which is the uh, rezoning request you have before you. Um, the first time I stood up here before planning commission, I was just following a great report by planning staff, but uh, this time I'm going it alone. <laughs> so I, I do want to say before I get started that it has been a pleasure to uh, work with um, you all staff here and to come before your planning commission as well. Uh, good experience. So um, I'm trying to set this thing up so that I can get the full page. Okay. So uh, the Prather family has hired us to, um, to do this planning work for them. This um, property that we're showing this, get this out of the way. Here we go. Uh, this property has been owned by the Prather uh, family for plus or minus 75 years, and uh, the Prathers expressed uh, to our group their desire to make this a legacy project um, for uh, not only their family, uh, but for the greater community. Um, they're very invested, as I'm sure most of you know, in, in the Harlem area and in the county, and they want to remain invested and um, develop this master planned uh, community uh, as a great place for the community uh, to create value in the community, uh, not only for their family, but uh, for the community at large. So that, that's the underlying um, and guiding um, principle for uh, this, this whole vision, which I'm gonna share with you very briefly. Uh, you, you guys have seen the narrative so I'm just gonna kind of hit the high notes. This is a mixed use, master planned um, community. It's not a subdivision. Uh, it seeks to be uh, a great place, a complete place where uh, people can uh, live, uh, work, play, uh, and, and, and enjoy recreation. Uh, so it's more than just uh, lots and single-family homes. Uh, it's everything that you would have in a true small town. And it seeks to be uh, a part of the greater community. Um, it's 834 acres, uh, and it's located in the, the old Pumpkin Center area. And it's right down the road from Harlem, and it seeks to be a part of the context of Harlem. Uh, it doesn't seek to be a place from anywhere USA, it uh, seeks to be a, a quality built environment and to fit into that context uh, that exists there. So we seek to um, follow the, the goals that are laid out in, in the county's vision. Um, so I'm not gonna list all those, but you all know what your 2035 vision plan looks like. And, and, and I just wanna say how uh, fortunate we feel to be working in a place that is uh, so blessed during such a, a trying time nationally and, and throughout the world right now uh, where there is economic um, progress and work to be done and you guys are just very fortunate and, and we appreciate the opportunity to be working here. Um, so Greenpoint would hopefully take advantage uh, of those opportunities to create a great place in that environment. Uh, preserving green space, 20% uh, of open space would be preserved. Um, the, the underlying theme of, uh, of this place is to provide a lot of different types of building. Um, and um, that diversity is a major um, guiding principle for this uh, development. And so there will be everything from natural open space 
all the way to a village uh, type feel. So you can see on this slide that you know there will be parks and green space and preserved lands. There will be large lots uh, for more what we would call like a farmstead or an estate style home. Uh, there will be suburban type development, which you see all over uh, Columbia County currently. And there will be um, uh, more compact development where um, single family homes are, are a little closer together and then homes and businesses um, in the same context in a village walkable uh, scale. So all those things would be included in Greenpoint. We believe that that type of planning um, and community building uh, is the ultimate um, sustainability. Uh, it's how you create a place that, that stands the test of time. And um, so that's what we're trying to achieve with this master plan. So here's some images of green space character, uh, places where neighbors can gather together and get to know one another and uh, enjoy um, community events, participate in the community, um, place where there's safety, the kids can ride bikes um, to school as well as to the park, fields. Um, there's the potential for active recreation here if the county so desires to have it. Then what we've got here are just some slides of some of the different types of streets and roads that you would have through the community. They range from very rural feeling um, to the suburban and on into more village and commercial styles. And all these photographs, a lot of them are taken from places that you all are familiar with. Uh, some of them are in Hammonds Ferry, Riverwood, uh, other master planned communities uh, in, in this general area. So this, this slide shows the overall master framework plan and how the different, uh, the different districts of development where these different housing and uh, commercial types of de development will be um, mixed together. And here's some product imagery that I'll just go through. And this is more of the estate style, style large lot. Um, these are more of the suburban style lots that are larger. You know, these, these type lots have more open space in the back, um, probably, you know, more outdoor living areas. Folks who can afford to maintain that type of lifestyle and landscape would, would would use these lots. And then we get into uh, a little more compact village residential. I'm going to have to ask you to speed up just a bit. Okay. And then some of the more compact um, mixed use areas where businesses and uh, commercial small, small businesses and uh, restaurants and cafes would mix in with the residential. So that's it. Uh, there's, there's also some commercial inspiration, uh, again, very familiar to a place like Riverwood. And that completes the presentation. Again, uh, just want to reiterate, this, this is a place, it's not a subdivision. Uh, it's a place where people can live, work, play, uh, a pleasing and, and beautiful environment built environment for, for the community overall. Yes, sir. How long have you been working on this project? Several, several years, or your company, or whoever. I mean, this is not something new. And, and the first stage of Greenpoint is part of and whatever. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. Um, there is a... Uh, this slide you can see down here in the bottom left where the Harlem Middle School is. There is a, there is a current phase of Greenpoint uh, underway right now, which is single family homes. And this will complement that or be um, a continuation of that. But as far as the planning for this that, that you have here, y'all been on, working on this for 
Well, we've been probably underway with Prather's okay. 18 months or so. Uh, another quick, quick question. On some of the streets in here, it had optional uh, parking or optional sidewalks both sides so how's that going to to play in to it somewhere sure. down the road well this is so the framework plan that we have in this this package is is a conceptual plan right uh it's meant to give us all something to look at and hold on to and uh to use to uh, project the vision um flexibility uh, is one of the guiding principles in any master plan community. So the ability to uh, lay out street types, um, some street types might be more rural in nature, which probably uh, wouldn't have as much sidewalks and on-street parking on them. Some streets would be more village-oriented, which would be more walkable, more pedestrian use, and uh, more need for on-street parking, which is off of the lots. So um, those, those options are available, but not required. That makes sense to uh, you. It, it does, but you know, a lot of times, and, and a big thing for us, or a commissioner, and what we get calls about, or I get calls about, is know, uh, people parking all over the, the streets and, and all these neighborhoods, and it really wasn't maybe built for both sides of parking, all of that stuff. So just making sure that all of that would be covered. Sure. We not opt out, and then all of a sudden, the people that are buying these lots, they still have the intent of street parking, you know? And yes, sir. It, Everything here, and I, I'll um, make sure that I'm not speaking out of turn with Scott, but I, everything here is going to be uh, subject to approval, site plan approval. So whenever that section of the development is, is proposed, uh, then at that time parking will be reviewed and approved uh, you know, based on the capacity that's required. On, on that note, you mentioned as those sections come about, can you give us a brief, brief, because it's a huge presentation, a brief summary of the phases and potential timeline that you guys are looking at? What are you kind of sure. explain that to everyone? Yes, sir. Can I, can I edit your question? If this was approved tonight, when would you start building houses? The Phase one of Greenpoint that is currently underway is still has quite a few lots uh, to get. I'm not talking about phase one. So, so that's already approved. probably five years good. away. Probably five years away before uh, residential lots starting to be built. Three to five years. Are starting to be built. And moving forward, talking about roughly in that first phase and then in a timeline. I mean, I, I was so that first phase could be three to. Three to three to five years, let's say, and the last phase might be thirty years away. The you know some of the highway commercial on Appling Harlem Road might start a little sooner. I mean, this you know hopefully the the Sprint will get to go in here soon, and then you might see another section of uh, commercial go in there along with it soon after it. Um, You'll see some of the larger lots um, on Wrightsboro Road, particularly, start to come online a lot sooner than the tight, knit, more compact development. Uh, that's we talk about a lot is critical mass, and so there's going to be a, a lot of single-family, more traditional, uh, what I would say, more conventional single-family lots that you see like in the phase one area will be developed a lot sooner than some of the more compact uh, parts of the development, if that makes sense to everyone. Question? Uh, one of the concerns that people have um, is about traffic. Um, that's a, a stressed uh, 
section of road all the way from there up to the interchange. Um, do you have any information about what's upcoming and how you're planning in, in traffic improvements, not only at the entrance uh, to the project, but along Appling Harlem Road? We got a traffic Castle. expert here. I don't know if you guys know this fellow, but uh, um, bad move. Self, Steve. I the other that night was I was nodding off and my wife asked me what I was reading and I said, I'm reading Mr. Castle's traffic report. Before Steve gets here, I'll just say that <laughs> traffic has been considered and uh, that connectivity is a, is, a, is a huge part of the plan. Yeah, as, uh, as Wall said. Name we, and it, state your name. And oh, uh, and arrest record. Uh, Steve Castle, 25 Plantation Hills Drive, Evans, Georgia. Uh, yeah, we, we analyzed this when, I, when uh, Lionel first approached me about it. You, know, you have this big development. Build it all out, and you add it to existing traffic. It's going to blow up. Uh, pretty much said, you you have to do this in five five year phases. Uh, let's look at what you're going to build in five years. Let's look at the impact at every driveway, and the intersections associated with it, uh, including the roundabout, uh, and then also ten years. But you're really looking at the five year. What's really going to happen? Because I, I give you a good example would be Riverwood off of. Uh, William Few. You know, before General Wood Parkway was built, everything came in off of William Few. Okay, so then you had a project that was planned out, to, you know, 10 years. You end up with 600 foot dual left turn lanes that you don't need because General Wood's open. So it's pretty much like let's plan for as this thing goes along because uh, you're really not sure what's going to happen. A new roadway might be built. Something else is going to, you know, or a new, uh, well, you get an Amazon facility or something like that, or a new road. You just don't know what's going to split and affect traffic, and then you're stuck with an improvement, uh, maybe even. Uh, you know, driveway stub outs and things like that that I can't stand that are all like pretty much guesswork at that point. So let's look at what you really can do. Uh, so the first phase was 100 homes plus the Sprint gas station, about 30,000 30, square feet of retail. Um, based on that, um, as you can imagine, during when school's in, uh, luckily we got some counts in before the COVID hit, so we actually had normal traffic patterns. Um, it shows that you know you have some impact coming northbound on the, at the roundabout, um, especially for the right turn movement going on to Wrightsboro. But this development doesn't contribute anything to that movement. Um, looked back at the DOT concept report, and it actually called for that right turn lane to be on that roundabout. Um, not sure why it wasn't built or what. I'm sure it said just something to do it right away or something. But if you had that, it would handle this development for 10 years. Um, don't have it, but at the same time, it's you're looking at one hour during the day. If you look at the evening peak hour, it's you know from a, from a traffic standpoint, I understand that people are going to have an impact. There's going to be times of the day where you have a harder time getting out of your your uh, your subdivision and others, but you really look at where you're contributing turning movements, especially for this development, that intersection where everything's going mostly split. Um, yes, yeah, some traffic's going to go up to I-20, but DOT is just you know, do it, done a roundabout up there that's basically going to handle about like a fire hose for the next 10 or 15 years. Um, so anyway, based on that, uh, Lionel probably wasn't too happy that I said you're going to need left turn and right turn lanes at every driveway. So you're not going to impact the through traffic on Appling Harlem or Wrightsboro Road. Um, and so right now I think, you know, for the foreseeable future, it'll, it'll operate pretty efficiently. Uh, one, is it going to be zero impact? No. Um, no, no growth is, but uh, at the same time, I think he's got a good plan. And as he continues to do this and continues to hire me to do his work, uh, <laughs> Almost I have a good plan. Yeah. Or else it'll blow up. So anyway, I think for you know for the foreseeable future, you're looking at a pretty efficient operation too. Steve, did you just say there'd be a right hand lane at every? Yes, these right turn diesel lane, especially coming southbound. Uh, you're gonna need that. You're 55 mile an hour speed zone through there. So you're not going to need it. Um, DOT's criteria, which is who's going to review this plan, is very low for 55 mile an hour. Um, looking at 50 per day is going to require a right turn lane, and 100 left turns a day require left turn lane. So, and it meets all that criteria. And, and Lionel's aware of that, and he didn't. He didn't smile, but he didn't flinch. Questions? Thank you. Mr. David Snipes. Uh, 
not use technology. Thank you. My name is uh, Harlem. Uh, I'm the president of the H uh, Homeowners Association for Hatcher Glen, the neighborhood located right there at Pumpkin Center. I appreciate the op I greatly appreciate the opportunity to speak this evening. I'm aware that uh, the restricted time, I'll try to keep my comments. I, I have prepared comments. However, some of my questions and my points have been addressed, so I'm going to try to adjust on the fly, so please bear with me. Um, Good. Take your time. Uh, much thanks to Ms. Crowley for, for uh, allowing me to set up if I, if I wanted to, but again, I wanted to avoid technology because sometimes it's not my, my best friend, plus my 13-year-old daughter isn't here to help me. So um, I want to reiterate what I shared with the Planning Commission, and that is uh, we welcome you know, coming Greenpoint development. We're, we're the neighbors. We're going to be the neighbors for this plan, right? Um, Columbia County is growing exponentially. Uh, this project will certainly accommodate the upcoming residential commercial requirements. We expect that the project will move forward tonight. Uh, but we would like to make just a small adjustment to just one piece of the plan. Uh, following the Planning Commission meeting, we had more time to review the County Code of Ordinances and modified our concerns and recommendations uh, somewhat. Our, conditions, our, our concerns excuse me, are primarily focused on one, the mixed-use plans for the tract uh, located at tax map 030, parcel 083T. Secondly, uh, what you know, addresses to, to some degree the lack of a detailed traffic management plan in and around uh, the area. What we're mainly concerned about is Rodsboro Road. And, uh, and the second page of what I just handed you, I'll highlight that, and I'll come back to that in a minute. And third, what appears to be, and we'll address this with the Board of Education, but what appears to be empty optimism uh, from the Board of Education to uh, regarding future, future school capacity right, to support this, this development. So we'll address that with them. But to be clear, uh, our zoning concerns are focused on parcel 083T and no others. Uh, the Greenpoint team presented a land use summary, or he, he referred to Mr. Willing did as a master framework plan. That's slide one of what you have in front of you. At the Planning Commission meeting, uh, the notes different, uh, the commission meeting, excuse me, uh, that, that slide you see there notes commercial residential mixed use development uh, labeled MUD districts within project. On page 37 of, their, of the Greenpoint project information file, the zoning for the MUD spaces are said to be, quote, similar to Columbia County zoning R3A, CR, AR10, C1CC, and P1 with commercial uses consistent with code section 9097 to include microbreweries and brew pubs, end quote. Overall being, again, I quote, village residential to village commercial in character, end quote. County code does not have village residential commercial zone equivalents. Uh, secondly, we feel that the proposed 30-foot buffer along Ratsboro Road is insufficient to preserve the rural setting that attracted us to Hatcher Glen to begin with. Along I-20, 50-foot bu buffers are planned. Uh, and the last concern for this particular parcel, and Mr. Milling uh, did acknowledge to, to the Planning Commission, is that the, the framework of a plan is conceptual, uh, meaning that the final project may be adjusted more as, uh, as this is developed. We also learned of the plan, as we talked about just briefly, at its phased approach, five, roughly five years each, and that's outlined in their uh, information packet. Um, but the later stages, uh, later phases of this plan aren't really discussed much in the information packet, and that's what we'd like more information about, uh, particularly as it re re uh, relates to the area east of Appling Island Road. So um, I would like to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to infer that the development won't really begin on that part, the eastern part of Appling Island Road, until about 2030, so we're hopeful for that. But uh, so our requests for parcel 083T uh, is to add an approval condition to simply remove the option for community commercial CC type development to include no brew pubs or microbreweries regardless of the zone coding. This would allow the parcel to retain its mixed use designation for residential as in multifamily, for professional or even neighborhood commercial C1 development with conditions. Hatcher Glen is coded R1, therefore we would prefer similar pairing with another residential zone like, referring to that same slide I gave you, RD1 and RD3 on the western portion of the project, uh, north and south of Bradsboro Road. And the, uh, the county staff acknowledges that within the Greenpoint plans, quote, the mixed-use portion includes a village commercial and institutional character, with uses similar to the county's C1, CC, and P1 districts, with the additions of microbreweries and brew pubs. And although current county code allows for microbreweries and pubs to operate as long as the revenues, revenue is 51%, 49% food and alcohol derived respectively, that slight majority only matters in elections. So they are not acceptable immediately adjacent to our single family homes. County code section 9094 states, planned plan unit development proposals, quote, must be compatible with the character of surrounding land uses, end quote. 
we contend our con existing residential neighborhood is not compatible with the intended commercial usage across the street. Second recommendation for 083T is to increase the minimum buffer width along Rotsboro Road from 30 feet to 50 feet to perpetuate the rural aesthetic and traditional setting for Western Columbia County. Lastly, we ask that Greenpoint uh, publicly publish the plans for the latter phases of their, of their project. Uh, say that five times fast. So our second major concern is the lack of a detailed traffic, uh, traffic management plan for the county to, from the county to support future vehicular flows through the area. And forgive me if they exist, and if so, please point us to, the, to where they are so we can you know, look at those over and assuage our concerns. Uh, the Greenpoint team did provide traffic studies. Um, however, they center on the impacts to the roundabout. Uh, that's in the next page, if you look there, um, at the intersections of Roxborough and Apple Harmony Road, uh, and not much further out from that roundabout. So we're asking you to guarantee you protect the movement for us through the only ingress and egress point to our neighborhood, denoted with a circle on the second page of what I handed out to you. <laughs> City of Harlem expresses similar concerns in the, DR, in the DRI final memo and report. Um, so I'm a wait and see approach regarding infrastructure support to this development plan just simply won't suffice. Um, our request then, should road widening occur, as we expect it will, this should, this should be taken from the north side of Rossboro Road, given the land is yet undeveloped, to mitigate disruption to the existing Hatcher Glen properties. Moreover, with the anticipated increase in traffic to our area, we will not have a protected left turn uh, onto Rossboro Road. We need a traffic light, stop sign, or some other mechanism at the intersection of Drayton Way and Rossboro Road to ensure we can enter and exit our neighborhood. Further, we asked, the next phase of the, uh, of the, of the project um, include a detailed management, uh, me, traffic management plan for the roundabout, the Appling Harlem and, and Rutsboro roundabout, and its thoroughfares, extending a minimum of one mile in each direction. So a future report would be nice to us to, to again, wait, assuage our concerns. Uh, traffic is already congested around Harlem Middle School currently, uh, and a posted traffic officer is not a viable permanent solution. So I know I'm out of, I'm out of time. I apologize for that, but I thank you You're for good. the opportunity to speak. Um, Breath. Yeah. By all means. <laughs> uh, well, I, I tried to you don't pass minutes, out. So. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 council and staff, y'all kept up with this, or okay? <laughs> well, <laughs> right. You know, I, I'm a military guy, right? They, you know, they say five minutes, we got to do it. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so Penny, any questions? Oh, then? Job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Stipes, uh, we do read your mail, and, and I read yours, and I, I had a question, a couple of questions for Mr. Sterling. I'll go with the easiest one first, and uh, the traffic is always a concern, yeah. and. I, I walked Hatcher Glen uh, yep. a long oh, time ago. Too. Yeah, that's right. A long time ago, I actually used to ride my horse out there before even your home was there. Okay, so that area has changed a lot. Um, yeah, we're but, emblematic of this change. <laughs> Part of the reason why this has happened. So exactly. So I went through uh, I went through the Greenpoint traffic study. Uh, I couldn't keep up. Sorry, Mr. Castle. And uh, so I asked Mr. Uh, Mr. Sterling about it. Um, and we talked about future access to Greenpoint and how it's going to require a GDOT review and approval on the design. And, and, and it's not part of the perimeter study, but it is going to require input from the, from the GDOT. And that said, I'm going to invite Mr. Schlachter to uh, expand on that a little bit. Absolutely. Department of Transportation will not blanket what you're going to do and then come back and tell them, here's exactly where we're putting it. Until they come back and say, we're putting a restaurant or we're putting houses or we're putting a shopping center. GDOT will not comment on what's required. So this is the route. We have no authority to tell them what to do on that route. They will not comment on all that. If you come in, the state will actually take into consideration Hatcher Glen. They will look at Hatcher Glen and make sure that whatever's done to Riceboro Road does not impact negatively Hatcher Glen. Sure. We've experienced that many times over, actually right across the street. Big, large lots on the southern side of Riceboro Road. Uh, they actually tried to get some driveways for that section already, and, and did not. Drive uh, that was It was a single-family gravel driveway, and GDOT refused to give them their access point. Um, rest assured, GDOT is going to take that into consideration. Mr. Snipes, in your um, in your presentation to the Planning and Zoning Commission, one of the things you talked about was your, the compatibility with the Vision 2035 plan. Yep. Have, have you have, have your questions about that been answered? Uh, yeah, so that's what I try to, that's why we really want this to be as, as we prefer as much of a residential uh, development there in, in this tract as possible to understand there's going to be a transition, right, from the residential, the neighborhoods tract in that plan um, that is south of Riceboro, actually southeast of Riceboro and, and Appling Harlem. Um, so we want to 
facilitate that transition, right, from neighborhoods to commercial, yeah, albeit light commercial activity. So uh, if, if, you know, we would prefer, you know, albeit uh, townhouses or apartment complexes, as opposed to some other type of business uh, initially, and definitely not anything anywhere that sells alcohol because of the proximity, obviously, to our neighborhood. Uh, yeah, the Chairman Cox, I think his name is, is in the Planning Commission, he referred to the 51-49 uh, ratio, and I said that's may have a chance to rebut, but yeah, 51 in one hand, 49 in another, that's six in one hand, half a dozen in another. That's the difference in a pack of fries. With. Yeah, yeah. So um, you also referred to questions about education and the schools and that. Did you get your questions answered about that I, and, and I, how schools are built and how they don't really build yes, ahead? Yes, so did learn. I did learn in the uh, last meeting, I think we, uh, many of us understood, uh, we didn't realize, or I didn't at least, that uh, sales taxes didn't go to building schools. Or they do go to schools, is that right? They do. They, and they, then, they and can then, only be used for capital then, funds. And then they have uh, a one income cent. tax goes to paying for salaries. Right? Thirds of the property tax right. the property goes tax. to the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, that was never a concern. However, um, we, we have some neighbors that are and uh, other friends that are employed by the school district, and they do not concur with whoever the, the staff refer to from the Board of Education that the pace of development would keep up, or rather the school district could keep up with the pace of development. So that's why I think, unless there's something you all can tell me about it, well, also, I think we'll yeah. refer to the Board of Education for that one. They're not built for, we might have extra students. They don't build ahead. They don't make sure. them too big. So we generally end up with a few portables before it's budgeted to build those bigger schools. And that's unfortunate, and that's no yeah. fun, but... I think schools are like roads. They are. Yeah, not they follow. You can't get the money to build them until you have the students. It's totally at backwards. Right. You can't, get, you can't make major road improvements without t some type of splash, which is what we do, or state or federal funding, and they won't give you the money, Build the people are already there. We just, we they just plan ahead, the get pace. the road built. I got bad news. Yeah. Can't get the money to do it. They will not accept projections or anything, no matter how much strong the Trey's on the state is. school board. He can had to have to somebody it. almost get killed at I-20 to get them to widen the exit ramp. at Grove Which we're looking forward to, by the way. Uh, they're at 183. Yes. So we're looking forward to that very, very much so. But yeah, so we, I, I think, and, and Mr. Gellius has, uh, you know, addressed us directly. Uh, sorry if I butchered your name, um, but uh, yes, but no, he, we, we, you know, the traffic is a concern. Uh, we look at so some of us have been around uh, the area for several years. I've only we've only been here for two years, um, and and we've been enamored by the county, and you know, we've set roots here now. Um, so when I retire from the military, I probably stay here. Um, right. But uh, the, the the lure is that Grove Town. Expanded so fast, right? And it just couldn't, and fortunately, the infrastructure just didn't keep up with that pace of change. So that's our major concern. Look out, and, and obviously, trees as we look forward, you know, from our houses there. But understanding that change is going to happen, right? This is, this is going to happen, but we would like to see a more nuanced, uh, as, as I've phrased it, transition from the neighborhood section of the, the development plan to 2035 vision to the commercial areas. That's all we're asking for. Mr. Seth, I'm going to return to you, and uh, you had a concern about a, a brew pub, and right, yep. we, uh, I would rather have people eating than drinking, yep. uh, which is why we have our formula, and it works for us, uh, and, and I'm not being dismissive, but have you looked at that Exxon and seen how many 424 yeah. packs come out of there? Yeah, yeah, but the, <laughs> the, the, the difference, I would argue, is that they're not, they're not supposed to remain, right? They're not supposed Correct. to loiter Correct. and put Don't have a permit alcohol. to drink on site. On right, so they, t they pick, and go, pick up and go. So that, that was, so all the, although they should, should be eating, right, to uh, soak up some of the alcohol as you're eating, uh, nonetheless. Uh, Technically, we don't approve bars. Right, but, but uh, that's why I use the verbiage that's in the county code, right, microbreweries and, and brew pubs, uh, because they would sell uh, food in addition to alcohol. So you we had a question about the buffer. Yes. 30 versus 50, you said? Right, and it's just, it's just to, again, uh, create some, some, some space or to increase the green space. Um, and retain that that role setting. Um, we see uh, so in that second um, slide I gave you, uh, Drayton Way, which is our only ingress egress point to our neighborhood. Um, that road will effectively continue in the tentative plans that you see for, for Greenpoint, which is totally understandable, um, makes sense. But there's going to be obviously an opening there to create a street. So we want to try and uh, 
maintain that buffer that's as much as we can right and also there and I didn't address it here but the signage and I, I know there will be necessary signage for either residential or commercial developments that goes there um, we want to try to minimize that as possible too because our, our, our RD1 equivalent the neighborhood is going to retain that status if you will questions I believe the signage was addressed with detail in the plan as far as monument signage sure, yeah style and not a major concern of ours. Not, not a major concern. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Elena, Elaine Howell. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you doing tonight? Uh, my name is Elaine Howell. I live at 2948 Old Thompson Road in Amplin, Georgia. And I just want to thank you for allowing the residents of Columbia County to speak regarding the plans for District 4. We all agree change is coming, and we have the opportunity to work together as a whole with the commission and the developers and the builders to make sure that we have created and follow the Vision 35 to help guide us in the direction to preserve the rural development and direct growth in areas not designated as rural communities. By reviewing the map that was outlined on the Vision 2035 plan on the website, it is showing the area in question as Applin Harlem Area Neighborhoods and Applin Harlem Employment Activity Center. Has the map been updated from the original Vision 2035 plan? Final reports from, I believe, um, the DR uh, number 3084 states that the proposed project, project is located in rural area on the regional developable map. And why I'm bringing this up, because I would like to, I know the change is coming. I mean, the RD1, I wish I could see the lot sizes increased. That is a small number of 17 for out of 832 acres. Um, the RD2 with 212. What worries me the most is your RD3 at 800. I'm not quite sure with the mixed use units that is new to Columbia County as far as the extent that they would like to go. And doing my research, I cannot find much information on the Unicode or in, or in Columbia County for the MUD requirements. So, I mean, and I know that is later on down years away from getting to a lot of the mixed use land but the RD3, 800 units of apartments, townhomes, flats, that does not envision anything that will help envision and protect a rural area. And that is just the main concern I would like to see that hopefully we can work and maybe come up with a kind of different plan to reduce the number of RD3 units and maybe increase the RD1 and the RD2. Um, and with staying with the rural, they are showing a high density of one to four units per acre. And if I'm not mistaken on the current, being in the rural area with the Vision 35, you would have to stick with the one single family unit per two and a half acres in the rural communities. Um, proposal for PUDs must be in compliance with the corrector with the character of surrounding land issues. PUD in this area does not comply with the surrounding land use. And I'm not quite sure about the waste management um, the majority of everyone I know in our areas, we're still under septic tanks. This area here is just now being developed. Are you bringing in sewers? Are they all going to be in sewer tanks? Are we going to be able to comply with that, especially with, you know, 800 units under RD3 and then mixed use of 700 that would be living and businesses? Um, and once you bring in that gap, and you bring in the waste management, how are we gonna ensure that the county commissioners do their due diligence in the future to keep this from encroaching further into the dual rural district four areas and to make sure that we are protected? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sewer question. Yeah, so there is sewer available for this land. Uh, actually, the sewer line was installed by the Prather family. I'm not sure which of their companies did it, but Prather family members paid to have that sewer installed. We did make it very clear to Mr. Prather when he came in that we would not guarantee that he would have capacity for this development. So 
as he brought back concept plans for each phase, we would then make an assessment if we had an available sewer. Um, if the sewer is not available, he will not be able to build the small lots. He will have to stick to the two and a half acre lots to build them. As it is available, we will provide that to him and then he can build smaller lots. No sewer, no small lots? Basically? Yeah. That. And also, there are no apartments in this, correct? No apartments, apartments like you would think apartment complex. There's some, some multi tenant townhomes. Townhomes, or maybe even a quadplex. Quadplex, but not a true apartment complex like you would think. Washington Commons, here off of Old Evans, or Brown Tree Boulevard, Brown Tree Way, are quadplexes. Any other questions? Uh, Ms. Joanne Murdoch. Good evening. My name is Joanne Murdoch. I live at 1547 Swint Road that in an area that was previously referred to as that old Pumpkin Center area. Thank you for hearing from me tonight. Um, I've emailed all of y'all. Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> it's nice to meet some of y'all that I haven't met before. Um, I'm here mainly because of the size of this rezoning request, the 800 plus acres is so large to consider in one swell swoop. And the fact that from when the county offices were closed, it was advertised, what I saw, as being only essential services were, were open for business. So I was under the impression essential services generally mean public safety and utility services, that type of thing. Yes, your offices evidently were open. I had no clue that y'all were seeing submitted plans and reviewing them and approving them and didn't know it was going before the planning commission. I feel like the majority of the population out there was following along with the shelter in place. So it was sprung very quickly. And I would appreciate if y'all could table this at least. I understand that there's going to be developing occurring. I'm not against that. This large 800 PUD is not consistent with the rural area out there. When I bought my property in 30 years ago, it was five acres. My neighbors bought five acres. We want large land, smaller, you know, not the house on top of each other. Um, it reminds me of a situation that y'all just went through a year ago with River Island. The zoning that was accepted X number of years ago allowed them to come in and build apartment complexes or put apartments there and the whole surrounding area, it caused an uproar and your, hand, their, your hands were tied because that zoning was done so many years in the past. With his plans for this 800 acres, He's looking at 25 years in the future. There's going to be people that move to this area that have no clue that it was a previously 20 years ago zoned for a PUD, and now I can't do anything. So I'm just asking if, you, if nothing else, at least table it for the night, set it for another meeting, so more people have time to review what, was, what is included in this plan and reconsider rezoning the total 800 acres. I mean, that's just such a large land mass in a very, very rural area of the county. And we like it that way. The people that are residing out there like the rural setting. We don't want the people that have replied to petitions and online stuff, they don't want to be living in an area that is so compact that you have your Martinez Evans Grove Town traffic situations going on. And I know that Harlem, the city of Harlem, did offer their comments about their concern about the traffic that would affect the left turn signal or left turn ability at their red light in downtown. And that's a state route. I don't see how they are gonna be able to widen that intersection. They've got a historic building on each side. So the only alternative to that would be a bypass 
around Harlem, which would require you all to wherever you decide to put a bypass. It's in the Tees Blast. Well, I'm not, I don't even, I'm not even talking about the money. Be taking somebody's land. Even if you're paying them for it, you know, you're, you're still destroying some of the rural aspects of what drew me to the area 30 years ago. And I just would like y'all to consider at least table in it, if nothing else. Thank you. Comments? Uh, I, would, I would say that uh, you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, that the bypass is $6.5 million project. It's the only one asked for by the city of Harlem and will run a course from Clary Cut Road down to Louisville Road, which is in two parts asking for traffic, but also mitigating some of that traffic. In addition, the 183 exit project is online, and it's let out, and I think we're seeing cones and flags out there right now, aren't we, Mr. Walker? Yeah. Yes, sir, completion date of July of 21, I believe is what they said, July of 20. I'd add, um, by definition from the governor during the, the whole COVID issue, construction considered essential services by definition during his executive orders and our construction services here at the county were wide open, working, getting everything done and didn't miss a beat. Um, appreciate all of our officers working hard to do that. So I, I hate it for the, if there was any misunderstanding thinking we were shut down, but our guys were working, our folks. Sure. Without going into detail, I understand that construction was working. But in any notice that I saw regarding county offices, it didn't say planning and zoning is open and we're looking at review and they plans. They weren't open for people to come in and visit and, it, and, and be in, in our... I think what I'm getting at is the public information that was put out was not clear so nobody, because there are people that just do nothing but sit online and look at submitted applications to see if it affects them. I don't think anybody that thought that this was going on during the shelter in place and all the offices being shut down. So when the Planning Commission had their meeting, it took a lot of the District 4 population by surprise, like, whoa, wait a minute. And I mean, the applications themselves don't have certain dates filled out on them, so we don't even know when they were received. Were they not online, Mr. Shaw? They're online. The applications are there, and the applicant has filled in the date that he completed it, but the office review portion is left blank. And it's just, I hate that there's some citizens out there that were under the assumption, and I'm in the construction field, sort of, so I was actually working too, but I hate that there's people out there that think that the offices were closed and did not realize, so they don't have the opportunity to come and look and really understand what this project consists of. The magnitude of the acreage, I just see a River Island situation occurring 15 years from now. What do you do, Ms. Murdoch? Um, I do building permits. Oh, for Harlem? I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, mean I, I don't want to bring that in. <laughs> I, I don't want to create a conflict. She does a fantastic job over it. I've worked with her several times in Grovetown. She does a fantastic job. I do want to say Okay, that. so you work for the city of Grovetown. Okay, so you're familiar with the process. And didn't mean to throw you under the bus. No, I was just... <laughs> hope that didn't hurt. Sorry. I'm <laughs> yeah. surprised you didn't... I am familiar with the in. process, and I'm just... I am Because I live out there, I'm concerned. The rural setting is what draws people out there. They're not buying that land for... 2.4 units per acre. They're buying it for the Patrick Glenn situation. They've got acre and a half lots. Per Is that unit. our number? 2.4 units per acre? You look at the overall development, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, depending on who you read, it's either 2.4 or 2.6. <laughs> yeah. Ms. Ms. Murdoch, were the uh, planning offices in Grovetown open during this period, handling business? We did not have customers come in, but yes, we were nine to, nine to 12 is what I worked. So do you have a communique that indicates who's closed, who's open, we're not accepting any customers? We I have no idea what the city put out. Well, now I'm, look, I'm wondering if you just have any communique in writing that 
indicates that. I have no idea. I, I have emails to my builders, yes. No, from, from the... From no, I, I, don't, I, I don't handle the public... I'm talking about the Board of Commissioners, mm -hmm. our Board of Commissioners and our... From y'all to us? Board. I'm confused by the question, I'm sorry. Did I receive anything from you saying your offices were open? Did you see any communique that indicated that we were not open for business for any the reason? The public notices on Facebook. For any reason. The public notices on Facebook said county offices were closed except essential services. Somebody not in this field, I knew because I was in the field, your average citizen, in their mind, essential services typically are public safety and your utilities. The average person doesn't consider planning and zoning as being an essential service. I can understand why it is because we whole reason why I was willing to work 9 to 5, because I could have, I mean, 9 to 12 every day, because I was given the option of staying home. But I didn't want our construction people to go thing. without. So, that answer? Yes, it's an answer. <laughs> Dates that we have, we received, they, they dated the application March 6th. We have re date received is March 16th of 20. Original public hearing date of, of 4, 2 of 20. Board of Commissioners meeting date of 421 of 20. All those were postponed because of COVID. To so was this plan out there on the 16th of March? We received it on the 16th of March. We still had to get it into our system and get it uploaded for the public to see. I don't know the actual date that it That's hit. Not. I'd have to ask, but received the application prior to, to county of businesses being shut down to public entering our building. And the signs that go along the side of the road, notices, they were? They were put up when, when we finally realized we could start having meetings, or, or the governor allowed us to start having meetings again, public meetings, and we came up with our method of having the public meeting. The planning department actually advertised per requirements at that time to make the. So, wait a minute, so you say that you got, received the application or notated March 16th and the signs were put up 15 days prior to the hearing? What date is, what date is that? It was the 21st. 21st was the planning commission meeting. It was the planning commission meeting. May 6th, so the signs would have went up May 6th? How'd you put the signs up if you don't receive the... The application March, the signs went out. In March. Okay, okay, okay. So Still, what, and, and just I can only speak for myself, but I think so. What that was two weeks ago ish, we had the planning mm -hmm. Thursday. So, how much time is enough to review the package? Well, I mean, for 800 acres and 167 page document, two that, weeks for people, I mean, I don't know. I don't, you know, it yeah, depends just, on the I'm intelligence just, I, I, of the person know, trying to look myself, at it, I guess. I see the time. I see, because I'm just addressing your, your question, right. request to postpone, and I'm, I take a step back and say, okay, if it was out, I, it, if it was out two days before the planning, then that would be so it's two solid weeks. I didn't go through it until then in detail, right around the planning commission. So I've gone through it to understand what it is, and I just, where's the line of too, not enough time? That's, that's all I, I mean. I'm I, not asking. I just I, right. that's, that, that's what I struggle with. Yeah. And if it's that important to me, and I actually I went through it in an afternoon. Granted, it took time. Well, I mean, I've been it was trying brutal. to do it my part. To, <laughs> <laughs> believe me, I've been trying to get the word out. But I mean, I had a hundred over a hundred people sign the petition, which the petition was done nothing but for me to gauge mm -hmm. the feeling of the community around. So, and the signatures that were done on the online thing. I got those 100 signatures in 24 hours. But that was when it was hot and heavy the week of the planning commission meeting. So, Murdoch, I followed not. your petition. Um, first of all, with that petition, it was hard to tell where in Georgia someone was when they signed it. <clears throat> and I'm considering that you probably eliminated the votes from really? Austria, Germany. I mean, I did look to see where people were. Yeah. Austria, Germany, hey, New South Wales, and I know Chile weighed in as well. I, I did look at that. Okay, you eliminated they might that. own property here, do okay. you know? Right. You know if the person good in Chile point. owned property? <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> Very good, thank you. 
All righty. No more comments. Thank you. All right. Any comments? Discussion? Comments, questions? Well, I did, you know, I, uh, my perspective in situations like this, and I, then I responded to you, Joanne, that, that I try to take a step back and, and look at situations twofold. One, how does it impact this? Does it impact the community in a bad way? If somebody wanted to put a nuclear dump in rural Columbia County, I mean, they're not, they're almost laughable, right? It just wouldn't happen. So, but I, I see situ situations like this and, and growth is going to happen, and this is well planned. I always go back to what are somebody's constitutional rights? They've owned the property for 75 years. And how do you take that away from somebody when, when a constitutional right is to profit from your property? And, and so it, these, this is the hardest. These are the hardest things we deal with. But again, I always take a step back and say, is it going to harm the community? No, yes or no. And two, how do I protect landowners' property owner rights to reasonably profit from their property? And it, one of the biggest challenges, like I said, is step in. They don't want us to take action in property. I get that. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm with you. So just how I weigh situations like this, get back. You know, I took an oath to uphold the Constitution, and the Constitution guarantees people right to profit from their property. And if it's not going to hurt citizens, it's not going to hurt the county, then I try to do the best I can to make it work for all parties. Because realistically, growth is going to happen. And you're right. I, I, there's a valid point here. 30 years. I'll be 80. You know, 30, 30 years, I won't be sitting here. And so, as much as we can button this thing down, we should. But balancing somebody's constitutional rights to profit from their property is turn it doesn't hurt the county. It's, it's how I weigh things, how I weigh these issues. Yes, ma'am. person who owns the land not selling it to them they already own it change it changing what's in the pie well, I thought, i'm sorry i thought you meant 1600 acres i mean the six yeah they would have to come back and would they have to go through this again would they not doubling or tripling um, no ma'am i i i i i'm afraid i i have to i was here when we went through a, a very painful moment with the county where we were uh, in a in a lawsuit with some some people that were just a few feet down the road and uh, it was it was made very clear that the plan itself as well as the narrative is part of any submittal to our planning department so they're not they do not have carte blanche they do not have have a, a blank check um, they have to adhere to the the core integrity of the plan as it is originally submitted to us and, and our counselor can can verify that unfortunately that was a uh, that was a painful painful uh, experience we had to go through but we did make sure that that was forever embedded in our in the way that we do planning and zoning here it's not it's not carte blanche there's no way that they can just go off script completely uh, the plan as you see it is part of what we will be voting on today now they can come back and request a PUD revision. They can do that, but it starts a whole process over and we go through all of the public hearings, notifications and all of that. But they can do that if they would like some more. But it wouldn't be just poop flip. Any other debate or questions? Is there a motion? Well, sir, as the, as the this falls under my my committee. It is it's my duty to, to come up with the motion. Um, I, I I have read read this report. Uh, I'll be honest with you. In my opinion, it it is one of the most comprehensive, best thought out plans that I've I've seen in my 12 years on this board. And I mean that very sincerely. 
Um, there is concern, I, I understand, about the, the size of it. 800 acres is a giant program, a, a, a very big process. But as we spoke about, it is going to be done in phases, and that's the reason for that. We, we, have a, a, we have to find a middle ground where we can take large parcels and plan strategically because they're large parcels. And, and, and rather than, than piecemeal, one at a time, not to pick on our neighbors, but I think that someone said that's how Grove Town happened. Um, to have a, a vision of, of an area instead and work on it in segments. I think is, is really the best method that we can possibly use. And we decided on that a few years ago as a county. We, we started developing land unit developments and residential unit developments and multi-purse mixed-use developments. Um, there's always going to be concerns about new development. One of the questions in my mind is if we were to turn this down, what happens to that 800 acres? Um, it is their property. They have the right to parcel it, sell it, break it up. As Mr. Snipes said, de development's going to come. I mean, that bypass is in the TIA. It's going to be built, whether it's, it's built right now or in 10 years or whatever. That development, it's, it's an interstate exit. It's going to come. We're building, we're building an, uh, we have a, a world-class office park right, off, right down the street. It is going to be developed, and I believe that the efforts made um, – for this plan exceed, far exceed, I'll be honest with you, almost anything from anyone I've seen um, put forth. And so for that reason, I will make a motion to approve the request of rezoning from RA, M1, PRD, and C3 to PUD for property located at tax map 029037B057030304. 048A, 048B, 039A, 036, and 038, and tax map 030, 038, and 038T, subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission report. Second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Kill me. I make a motion to approve the major PUD revision to revise the rear building setback to four feet for property located at tax map 061889, subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission report, and to approve entering into an encroachment agreement. Second. Here, Ms. Patsy Weaver. Please. Are there any questions? Well, the, the motion's to approve, so unless you want to argue that. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, sit down. <laughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion's approved. Go home now if you want. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the request for a variance to section 90-59, list of lot and structure requirements. To reduce the side setback for the property located at tax map 001A199, subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission report. Second. So to uh, allow them to add an addition to the side of their house, this is up close to the lake. Narrow lots, uh, they had this covered patio, would require them to get into the side setbacks. This will allow them to extend that if you approve. Any questions? We have one. Clarification. Just I'm make sure that clarification. I'm sorry. I did, I did not, it says section 90-59. Is that incorrect? The agenda does not match the motion. 5-3. Five, five, I amend that motion to five, three. state section 90-53, list of law and structure requirements. Change your second. Thank second. You. All in favor, raise your right hand. The motion carries. All right, where are we? Um, we need to we the door. close that door, please. Can't. Why? Uh, okay, you're in 14, is that right? 
Uh, I'm thinking I'm at 13. Am I not? 13. I'm at 13. 13, I think. Correct, Miss? Yes. Yes. All right. I make a motion to approve the request for variance to section 90 53, list of lot and structure requirements for property located at tax map 072004U, subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission report. See, if I just read ahead, I would have had it. Second. At this is a situation where we have a uh, structure that was built inside the existing setback. The contractor did not have the permit and built it without the permit. Variance would allow the structure to stay, and now the structure would have to be removed. Questions? All in favor, please raise your hand. As an addendum <clears throat> to that motion, I believe I have to make a motion to deny the request to waive half of the application fee for a total refund of six fifty. Second. Discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. Uh, Technically, you're supposed to ask beforehand, but just real quickly, go ahead. No, oh, okay. Oh, well, come up. Go and ahead. Come on down. Give Let's your name, sir. Scott Woodhams, 4587 Hardy McManus. Uh, the reason I had requested the um, the second half of the variance, uh, I've paid for the variance, obviously, but the property, and I sent an email to the commission. I'm sorry, to the planning uh, commission, I believe. Um, this building was not supposed to be built. Um, I was out of town when it was done. I contracted a contractor. It was not done in the time frame it was supposed to be completed. And he, he started that while I was gone without a building permit. Uh, he was paid to, to do a building permit. And when I came back, it was existing. So I've paid for a variance and requested the variance. I appreciate you allowing that. Um, but I was just trying to say it was kind of a second penalty to me to have to pay the second portion of the um, uh, for the variance because the builder did not do what they're supposed to do. They have been reprimanded. They all took them to court and the outcome was I haven't heard, but uh, he's been addressed and taken care of. And I didn't, I never authorized him to do that in that location or while I was out of town. Did but you some, ask him for a refund of the money since he cost you this? Uh, he went, no, he went to court. He's, he's out of the picture. He has nothing, I had no contact with him whatsoever. Nothing to do with the project anymore. Unfortunately, okay, for, for you and all of us, there's a lot of time from the staff been spent on this. And, and although that's, you didn't ask for the whole drama to be in your yard, it is. And, you know, out of fairness to taxpayers who pay for the staff to be here and, and straighten these things out, um, this, this is a cost of doing business for us. I would suggest, though, that you ask that builder to, you know, to make you whole. What happened, Matt, to the were found in favor in that case. I, I'm not sure the exact penalty that was imposed upon the builder, but he was found guilty of charges. Builders under your jurisdiction, under your, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not under that. So I'm just, you know, I feel like if there's something that needs to be penalized to him, I feel like that would be between you and, and the builder. I did what I felt was supposed to do. You know, hire a, a builder that's licensed in the county to do the building. He was supposed to have it done by the contract by the 31st of July because I was going to be out of town for six weeks, and he did not even start it by then. So when I got back, it was 80 percent. He did tell me while I was gone that he had started, and he was contracted to submit um, in a location that would be acceptable to. I mean, we we went out and walked it around where it's supposed to be, obviously, but uh, it was supposed to be within the 10 foot setback. Um, but this is directly, you know, penalizing me as the homeowner versus the contractor or the variance. I understand I'm paying for that and I've already paid for it. I have no issue with that, but it's just the, the penalty being placed on me for the second portion of that really kind of redundant in my opinion, because the contractor has been taken to court and, and addressed because he did not do what's proper. Did That's you also what? take him to court in addition to what I have the not. I've just did. severed all. All ties with him. Is that a civil issue between the two of them, Mr. Schreiber? Time was spent. 
Uh, I guess what would be the purpose of the builder having a license in the guidelines? I just feel like that there's responsibility lies on them. If I hire, the only thing I can do is hire someone that is, you know, uh, licensed in the county. I, I cannot uh, force them. They're not representing. They, he didn't represent me because I did not allow him to go without a building permit or to come have, you know, to make sure it was in his, in his setback. Did he have a building permit? No. no. So then no plans were submitted, so the county had no idea it was over the line? It was submitted and it was denied. It was and he went ahead and built them. So the county... Right, and I was not even in the, in the county. I was in the state at the time. I was gone for six weeks. And, you know, I, I never authorized that. I mean, yes, he, I guess he's representing me, but, I mean, somebody that represents you is so... I did not authorize or approve any of that, nor did any of you, because obviously that's why he was taken to court, and I feel like that should be the penalty in, in this case versus the homeowner that hired, went by, I did go by your guidelines and said, let's hire a contractor, and to my knowledge, he's still doing business in this, and has been doing for years. I mean, this guy's been around for years. I, I mean, I've, I've had, he's built other things for me, so I don't know why all of a sudden properly, but. Having to pay for that. It's not just having to pay for this variance. This is minuscule compared to what it's cost me, you know, outside of that. The cost of the building completely uh, botched. And then on top of that, now I have to go through the whole process of retrospectively going through inspections and everything else. So I don't even know what's involved in that yet, but I'm asking for one, you know, consideration that we just passed I didn't the authorize that. Pass the, pass, pass the variance. Pass the variance. Right, yes. And I appreciate that. But so variance is two parts. One being that I pay for the variance, and there's a penalty that's attached to that being double because it was placed in, or it was done prior to I get a it. permit being pulled, which, again, it was not something that I can do or did do. I mean, I don't have the ability to go pull a permit for a contract. $1,200? Correct. Twelve thirty, and that's what I'm asking. I have no problem paying for the variance. I'm being charged a penalty in addition to the variance because the contractor didn't pull a permit. We have a. I thought that was a. Code was changed. At the request of the, at, then, at that time, the, uh, I think not the building, construction advisory board. They came to the commission and requested that we put a penalty in place for people that came in after the fact to get their permits or their variances. And that's what this is. I, I missed that part. I wanted to call that up. The builder didn't do it right the first time, so I'm paying for it as the homeowner. As the property. Unfortunately, you contracted with someone who failed you. License through. They're not something beyond. He's a, if he's a state contractor, he has a state license that we have no idea. State license we have to allow him. Seems like that, like just the way you explain that is that it's, it's costing more had to go back because it was not pulled, I agree. And I have no issue with that, except that it should be put on the builder, not on the homeowner, in my opinion. That's the person that can pull that contract or that, that permit, not the homeowner. I'm, I'm not the one pulling that permit. I contracted somebody to do that, but the homeowner, I can't. And Ms. Malira, as a builder, are you not an agent for your clients? And they're not held, are they not held responsible for your actions? Ultimately, but as you know, we have a contract that says I will take care of all permits and right. So and, they and actually all. have action against you. Actually, yeah, it's, yes. a, it's a civil penalty if I don't do my part. Right. 
And you could also go to the Secretary of State and, and speak to the licensing board about his failures to, to uphold his end of the contract. What, what did the county take him for then? I got sent. Thank you. All right. Motion is out there, sir, and I believe there's a second. And I, frankly, I don't have a turning things around if y'all want to. But so there's a motion on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Press on. Mr. Raymond Smith. Fourteen. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep jumping ahead. I apologize. <laughs> we have like 18 items, and that's way past my math grade. Yeah. Item 14. I make a motion to approve the request for variance to Section 90-147G10B. Use provisions to increase the hours of operation to 24 hours a day for property located at tax map 029037E. We're in this area a lot tonight. Mm -hmm. For a second. Second. This is a this zoning is approved. This is simply a variance to allow them to remain open 24 hours a day. Do any of the neighbors complain about that? Hey, does anybody care? Anybody spoken up, complained? I've heard complaints about the 24 hour part. What have you heard complaints about? Heard it all tonight. Oh, okay. You want to run out there and get the man from Hatch of no, Land to say? No, 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 no. Get him back in. Does anyone want to go into the backstory of why this condition is there? Or should we just let that lie? Any more discussion? Lie. Okay. All favor, raise your right hand. Carries. Now. I apologize. You've been here for the last. Torturous hours, you know that you're supposed to give us your name and your <laughs> you address for the record. Part, right. And welcome to our, my longest committee meeting. commission meeting. <laughs> last time was a little bit rougher. <laughs> I think I was the last. Uh, the last. You're moving up the ladder a little bit, huh? You're getting <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm moving on up. I can hear to keep going. Well, um, I'm not here to oppose the Augusta uh, Christians uh, development. Oh, yes, sir. Maggie. Raymond and address, address, please. Okay. Raymond Smith, I'm at 3622 Phillips Drive. I'm a neighbor of Augusta Christian. So I'm not here to uh, oppose uh, Augusta Christian's uh, new development is entirely. However, I'm here to address all the numerous approvals I've seen with conditions and the conditions haven't happened in over uh, two decades. So I've been running around the military for the last 30 years, so I hadn't been able to make many of these and I've seen a, a lot of changes and 
I'm here today just to make sure after discussing with the headmaster and some of the county, Columbia County board members to make sure some of those uh, conditions actually take into effect. And you know, I want to address a few of those as I put this presentation together. You know, in living in this particular home, uh, since 2002, Augusta Christians has purchased a lot of properties, properties adjacent to me, and I made my attempt at trying to get a few and couldn't get any. And they've gotten them all, but my question to Augusta Christians is, why has it taken so long to pull them back into the campus? They still look like they're still a part of the neighborhood, and they were got in trouble between 2002 and 2008 where they were still using those buildings zone R2. You know, so they have special conditions to pull them back in. And so uh, the neighborhood, we wanted a few things done from that perspective of when they put different entrants on the backside of the school, that caused a lot of traffic congestion for the Phillips Drive and Lakeshore folks because folks were dodging the Baskin Road exit to come through that. We were a private-owned road that became county, so the right-of-way is not that big to have a whole lot of cars zooming in and out of here, folks dodging the the main gate. So we were promised a few things back in 08 that didn't happen. Uh, preferably, we were supposed to see some trees and some fencing that should have got built that never happened. So aesthetically, what we did end up with was uh, increased parking due to the fact that a lot of the adjacent properties around it, they started putting signs up saying no parking for a lot of the business. So that pushed a lot of people parking into the neighborhoods. So we've been trying to work through those issues, but as we started looking at some more changes hit the table here in 2011, you know, those trees were promised, but it didn't show up. So we saw new fences go in. However, the privacy and noise increased. And so the main reason why I'm here today is to address the fact that with the new recommendation for changes and some new building that they're asking for, that setbacks and green space be taken consideration. I'm really pushing hard for, and I got a few pictures here uh, showing that. Bad when you. Reese, can you help him? I got it. So as you can see in my drawing here, uh, the green bar uh, shows you where there should be trees and fences put at. Uh, the two buildings that concern me, I'm the building with all the cars there since I moved them from Texas, New York, and everywhere else that I was stationed. Uh, that empty parking lot there is, is an actual, sort of an overflow parking lot, and there's a proposed building going here that's going to be extended. Uh, the building here is going to be extended into uh, 2623's lot, and my concern was when that extending in there, you know, the trees that they have in there now are dead Z's type trees and you're taking those out and they gotta go with the board and see if they can find some better than those trees that they had. I'm really pushing hard for uh, some type of fence because there is no security in this property. These properties, and I don't know why Augusta Christie is not pushing for some type of security to separate them from the neighborhood. So I'm looking for something like that to be developed and I was promised that it would be done from the New headmaster, I'm putting him on the spot right now since we spent a lot of time outside talking about this. He's guaranteeing me, but I want it in the minutes to make sure that it does get done because I've seen 20 years of promises and hadn't seen it done yet. So I'm here today to Question? make sure that. Yeah. So, Augusta Christian owns the lot on Phillips Drive. Is that like egressing into a neighborhood? They've, they've bought all the properties on that side of the road. Okay. I'm sorry, sir, go ahead. So for, for the properties in that, it's the questions and things that I had for my biggest concern was if that building extended into the property, that it didn't say anywhere in the comprehensive plan of what that building would be. You know, Based on all the years of folks saying they're gonna put one thing and it turns into something else, you know, I'm trying to get ahead of making sure that doesn't turn into a daycare or a summer camp with a rock climb and slides right in my front door. So I'm just trying to make sure that I get some privacy. You know, I've been promised to be the last hot on house on the lot so that I could at least sell it with, for that point that, you know, I'm, an, I'm next to a private school. But aesthetically, as it's looking, it's not working for me because there's nothing really separating me from those old properties that's been there for almost two decades. So I'm looking to see 
when they tear that last one, 26, 23 down, that it doesn't turn into something that other than a playground that's already there that, that added during the 2008, that that playground is not extended or it doesn't turn into any more activities of that nature. Yes, sir. So, so sir, are, are you concerned that we're not able to enforce the conditions that have been imposed or that we are imposing in any future? Or are you worried that we need to put more conditions on? Um, are you saying we're not able to enforce existing conditions? Is that what you're saying? Or, or was, the, are these issues with the school? Well, what I'm basically saying is uh, prior up until this last, this last request, those conditions keep carrying over to the next revisement or request for change, and none of the conditions are being carried over and being done. And so what I'm saying keep is- Keep kicking the can. Exactly. 2008, the same tree line was on that request. And, it, and then here it is again in 2020, uh, again, showing up saying that we're going to put a fence and a tree line to aesthetically make that look better. And I'm just making sure that it does get done. That's why I'm standing here because I'm no, not. Eight, was it part of something that went through the commission? It was. Mr. Strickland's got those, those details. It's just Scott Strickland. Strickland. Scott Strickland. <laughs> Meeting has gone on a long time. <laughs> We are regressing. <laughs> we'll call him back staff members who left years ago. <laughs> Mr. Sterling. Where are you going, sir? <laughs> <laughs> like a family reunion around here. I think, you know, the issue that, you know, Mr. Smith raises is valid. They've been in each of these different revisions for whatever reason, and I, I certainly can't speak to those at this moment, why they haven't been implemented. There, I will say that none of the conditions have a timeline associated with that. So you know, when you make a condition and put it in there, if there's no timeline, there's, there's a certain amount of activity that can, can be done by staff. I think that's something that we've talked about internally with this latest revision is, is that we need to make sure that this gets done. Are there timelines on this one? Do we need to? There can be. There can timelines be. Timelines moving forward. I mean, if they're, if this can and, and I think we've had a, a pretty open dialogue uh, with staff and Mr. Smith and, and the headmaster, Mr. Walden, to, uh, Walden, Walden? He's back there. I yeah, saw Walden. Walden. <laughs> That, um, I know that there is some there is some understanding of what you know needs to happen and you know the timeline in which that should need, should occur. Come on down. Les, how are you? Well, thank you. State your name and address for the record, sir. Les Walden, forty three seventy Deerwood Lane, Evans. So, from a timing standpoint, have you? you have y'all talked about? Uh, I didn't talk to Mr. Smith about the timing, but when I talked to Miss Mystery in the department, Nana, we yeah. talked about a six-month time frame to do what I proposed. I actually proposed a fence a little bit longer than Mr. Smith had requested so that I can divert all the traffic off of Baston Road that prior to that went in. If you look the bottom right of that dark green line as a driveway. Draw that list. Finger, you can draw on the screen. Right here. This is a driveway to our business office, which is located right here. And I said we would extend the fence on down past that driveway so that everybody would have to come in here to go to the business office. So the You're gonna eliminate that access? Sir? You're gonna eliminate that access? Yes, sir. They'll come through our main parking lot. Okay. So then you guys have agreed, Put, putting a six month limit or six month requirement on this plan works. But I just say years in. Close enough. Sir. It's actually a condition from the planning commission that says six months. Okay, it's already it in. Does? Oh, oh. Is that, I didn't see that six months. So, so is this all the conditions you're talking about from years back, 10 years ago, or is well, it just on the new stuff? Of course, I don't want to speak for him, but where I'm drawing here is the original tree line and fence that we put up. And I wasn't there in 08, but apparently the property here was supposed to have a fence and, tre and a tree line, which we've done. You can see each of the trees there behind it. Going on down here, this 
uh, I'm sorry, yeah, from here down here, that fence was actually grandfathered in. It was about that far from the road, and last year we actually put a new fence up because it was falling down, and we put it further back from the road for to help him out as well. Martin. I wasn't aware that we needed trees there. We could certainly put some plantings there. There are other, uh, sh there's shrubbery that was there from houses before that we left in place. We just didn't put the tall cypress that, you know, get 30 foot tall, which is what's going to be in the other area. And, and just to, I don't want to belabor this. Y'all didn't ask, but oh, go ahead. press we're the other concern part. on. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I was at the planning meeting. He was at too. So we were here well past this. <laughs> uh, as far as the timing, just so y'all are familiar with what we do, you know, anytime a piece of property becomes available that you want to purchase, you're not going to not purchase it because you may never have the opportunity again. So, yes, we purchased it and we've left houses up and hadn't put a school building up, but we've maintained the, the yard and the houses and everything while we plan. And while we've been approved for some things in the past, just like everybody, especially in that mid-2000s range, we were impacted financially. We couldn't do some of the things that, you know, we, and I say we, I wasn't there then, but that they wanted to do at the time. So that's why there have been changes and why there's been some delay in some of the development. A lot of it has to do with finances. I understand his point, but my point is that a lot of those, that overflow on street and off street parking is on my lawn. So I spent a lot of time calling Columbia County out there or towing folks because folks are just not considerate of this peach orchard that we live on. Since it's a peach orchard, folks get out of their cars after they park on my lawn and start picking up pecans. I'm like, you know, you realize, you know, you're on my lawn. So some folks would be very offended at that. So I, I, don't, I don't disagree at all with that, that fence coming all the way down and it's a proper fence, you know. So whatever happens on the other side of it, I'm fine with. I'm just trying to limit some of the parking and fencing issues that we have there to at least control some of them. A lot of this out of his control is the sheriff's office. However, you know, a lot of folks like to take shortcuts by coming through the neighborhood and they're not doing the speed limit and they're just basically speeding through this place. And we're just trying to do some traffic management and to grow with their growth management plan. However, from what I've seen over the last 20 years, it's just a little, just a little bit too slow, you know. It, how long does it take to put up a fence? You know, they could hire me, and I, <laughs> I'll be more than happy to put a, put, build a fence for them, you know, because I've been building on this house at 3622 for almost 10 years as I go around the countryside. So, so if they run the fence down, like he's saying, and they block off that entrance, then no, there's not going to be direct access from the school to your no. to Phillips Drive. So the, hopefully that will solve some of the problems. That will solve a lot of problems because I – a lot of folks are using that little bypass by his admin right. building to make another road because it's easy to get to the campus without going out to Baston Road. They just go across the grass, and that's an saw for me. You know, I'm like, hey, put something up there or, you know, to pull your traffic in. I'm not trying to be a, a hard in about all of this, but uh, I'm just haven't seen anything done from, from our perspective to make it look like a the neighborhood is separating from the campus. And so that's what I'm looking for, you know, and he's willing to work with me. I hadn't had anyone work me up until this point. You know, each time I come back each year, I see something change, but I don't see anything changing for the positive impact in the neighborhood. Is impacting them in a negative way. Mr. Well, Smith, can we go back to item uh, image number two? Which, and which, um, which property is yours, 3622? I'm, I'm here. And... You, all, all of those cars are not yours? Absolutely. After 30 years, you know. Now, I, are all of them titled and tagged? I, every last one of them. I'm impressed. That's a lot of cars. That's a lot of cars. <laughs> Do the so neighbors I, complain? Well, I bought 10 acres out in Deering to uh, move my cars, you know, because a lot of them are collector cars and yeah. I get rid of collector cars. So when you retire from the military in 30 years, you have a lot of cars <laughs> because you buy a car and a house everywhere you go. <laughs> So and, and so, a lot of folks can agree with me on that. You know, with nowadays, you got an old car. You know, they're selling on eBay for fifty, seventy thousand dollars for an old model car. Yeah. So I'm going after that market first before I decide just to get rid of anything. So I had to collect them someplace, and so I brought them there as a hub while I'm building on my land in Deering uh, Storage Shop. So I'll, I'll store all those cars there. Okay. I just want to make sure that wasn't. Augusta Christian folks parking in your yard. No, no. Okay. No. Those are, that would be those rude. Are my cars. That would be You know, bad. but when, when Augusta Christian fills up that other parking lot, imagine what that looks like. You could probably sell parking spots, right? 
you know, you could, you know, but you know, after I spent over a hundred thousand dollars building that house, you know, adding to it, I probably wouldn't sell it cheap because it looks like all the houses out there at Westlake because I built it like that because I'm yeah. pretty good. So, but that's what I did. So does this, does this, the, the way the package is together, does it solve your situation? It does. So uh, it, it does answer a lot of the questions I had with uh, what the uh, staff proposed and the headmaster was basically telling me what they're going to do. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be uh, uh, lost words uh, after this board is complete that I go another 10 years and I see new buildings and I don't see a fence or I don't see any trees. So I just want to make maybe sure. Maybe they can expedite it before school starts. <laughs> Well, tell you what, Mr. Smith, if they're not done within the period of time that they've set forth, come back and see us, speak to us again. And we'll put him on double secret probation. Okay. It does seem like you guys have a dialogue now, and, 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 and he's willing to work with you. And, and so I do not need to add anything to this motion because that six-month time limit is in this, that is in correct. the conditions. Well, as what the staff, I'm sorry, with Mr. Um, Smith. Smith, I'm trying to figure out. Focus. Smith. Starting to get drowsy as past his bedtime. Not so good. Um, we had the headmaster, Mr. Walton, and Mr. Smith, and then at the conditions. Those are in your motion. Okay, so I can I can read this motion as listed. Six months currently okay with you, sir, and and it does sound again like y'all have a dialogue. He, I get the impression maybe he'd be willing to try to do it faster if he can. All right. So is that all right with you? That's, that's all right with me. He's actually a good guy. I've known him for a while, so. Hey. You know, he, he knows I work in Cypher, so I can actually <laughs> see a few. <laughs> I have a few resources. Lord. I still work for DOD. How about a motion? I, gosh, it's a long one. I would like to make a motion to approve the request for a major revision to the current S1 zoning for property located at tax map 082A, 104, 105, 105A, 106, 107, 108, and 109 for a proposed building expansion and additional athletic field subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission report and to require that the fence and landscaping will be along the full length of the southeastern property line along the frontage of current parcel 3621 Phillips Drive and to the finance office located at 3619 Phillips Drive to prevent access onto the school property from Phillips Drive. The landscaping buffer will be supplemented with trees and shrubs to create a substantial visual buffer. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request for a rezoning from R3 to C1 for property located at tax map 077B170, subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission report. Second. The, uh, currently a house, this is across the street from our fire station headquarters, commercial building. Not in a neighborhood? I don't know. On the corner, it, it's right on the corner. It, it sits diagonal across the lot. Is that that headstone place across from it? The headstone place is across from below that. that. Right there below. We did, we did have at the Planning Commission when they signed, spoke to us about that. That buffer was there. Buffer not tear it down. That was, that was one comment we did receive. We did have people. And that's worked into the conditions. I have, I have a question. What is Thoughts on you know, Town Hall Road as far as uh, nightmare with traffic trying to make turns where you're going to whatever. Uh, what is the thought process moving forward? Is there a line that we're looking at stopping like Murray Road or somewhere below that? Or it looks like everything below that is, uh, is residential. From point, light transition. Go any further to the actual houses in the neighborhood. This this property here actually fronts on the property does not. Questions? 
All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Carries four to one. Mr. Chairman, this next item, I 1A17, I would like to ask any discussion take place before I make my motion. I'll be honest, I'm of two minds about it, and I know that there are some feelings around this board, and I'd, I'd like to have it discussed. John McKnight. Josh Thomason with you, or y'all together? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, John McKnight. This is my partner, uh, Josh Thomas, and we're both with uh, Piedmont Housing Group. Uh, talk about uh, Town Park Senior Village, uh, which will be a, a 74 unit, 55 and older uh, independent living community. Um, uh, for respect for everybody's time, I read through the comments that were in the uh, agenda packet uh, from Planning Commission. You know, rather than go through uh, all those again, uh, you know, just I'd be happy to go ahead and address any issues, questions, concerns anyone has. Sure. Do you consider this a, a senior living facility or just apartments? Uh, it's an independent senior living community. Uh, so, so it's uh, there'll be one and two bedroom uh, units. It'll be independent living, which, as opposed to assisted living, we won't have what typically is in assisted living, where it's, <clears throat> you know, there won't be meals, there won't be on-site nursing care, things like that. Uh, it'll be a community that's basically just deed restricted for seniors, individuals uh, 55 and older. So it's apartments. There's not a dining hall. There's not a salon. There's not a movie theater. This is not. This is not a senior living facility. This is apartments where everybody goes their own way. Apartments. It, it'd be a, a, a deed restricted uh, commu multifamily community. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you would consider that apartments. So the sole determinant is really age, fifty five and, and up. That's correct. And there's, oh, pardon me. There's only one and two bedroom units. I was looking through what, what you can, would consider the amenities in here. It looks like one washing machine per 25 units. That's a lot of people using one washing machine. Can you tell me how that could be 50 people? That's one coin-operated uh, washing machine per 25 units. Uh, each unit does have washer and dryer hookups. But they're not provided. They are not provided. Tell me about your staff there. Who all will you have on site? Will you have your maintenance man living on site? Will you have an attendant living on site? Will you have staff living there with your... We will not have staff living there, but we will have a full-time property manager that will be there Monday through Friday full-time and a full-time maintenance person. So by full-time, you mean 40 hours a week? That's correct. On, and on call the rest of the 24-7? Mm -hmm. That's correct, in case there's some kind of an emergency. So there's not staff living there? There, there will not be staff living there. So there's not services. This is not a service type Correct. It's it's a more active senior living. You know, as a, again, as a you know, to contrast it with the uh, assisted senior living, where you have a lot more folks that need you know memory care, a much higher intensive level of care and of services. Generally, these are folks that are more active seniors, folks in their late fifties, sixties, who you know are you know still still active, you know, still perfectly capable of living on their own, but maybe don't want the burden of you know, having an upkeep on a home by themselves, a lawn, things like that. And they also don't want to be a burden to family members as well. So we kind of provide that sort of gap in between, you know, a lot of folks outgrowing the need of having their own, um, you know, independent home and before they really need to go into an assisted living facility. Sure. Will your community, uh, your property manager, will, will he or she be a, a cruise director of sorts, you know, providing activities? You know, is there a van that takes some driving Miss Daisy over to Target? Is this there's there's community activities? Uh, you know, certain um, you know birthday uh, birthday activities. You know, they generally do monthly um, activities. Uh, but you know, is is uh, so there is a there is community activities here, but it wouldn't be you know something where they you know organize outings and such. The it's apartments. Apartments. It's 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 a multifamily community for for active seniors. So what makes what made you want to do apartments instead of the um, memory care that was originally zoned for? Well, really, there is a need. Um, we uh, we also in Horizon Senior Village that's in uh, Grovetown, you know, mm -hmm. Georgia, just right down the road. Uh, Horizon Senior Village has a 330 person waiting list. There is a very um, now is that apartments also, or is it a service community? It's, it's the same um, same model as this. You know, slightly different building type, but definitely same model where you know deed restricted, independent senior living. Um, and uh, we have a so there's a very strong market and a strong um, 
desire for this type of product. Because the issue with a lot of the independent living facilities is, you know, you start getting into people have to pay for the services in those communities, and you start looking at two, three thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. which is just frankly out of a lot of folks' price range. So if the one in Grovetown's doing so well. Why didn't you put this facility near it? Why did you want to put it in the heart of Evans? Uh, we don't want to have one just right next to one where we where is already there. And we've you know been looking around Columbia County. We, you know, our goal would be to spread it out a little bit. And this site seemed uh, seemed like a good location for us. And you didn't feel like the memory care services or assisted living or whatever it was originally it is currently zoned for. You didn't feel like that was a, a good fit for your. Company? It's it's not what we do. We don't do uh, assisted living memory care. So have you already purchased the property or is contingent upon the rezoning? Uh, it's contingent upon the rezoning. So if it does not get rezoned, you will not purchase it? That's correct. The only question I have is just with dealing with cars and the traffic. 34 apartments. I'm These are active seniors, so I assume there'll be at least one car per I'm unit. Traffic. But yeah, you have a large that, parking the area there. You're, you're assuming. 16 spots. Scott, that road, it's on the expansion list. It's a TS2 has to pass, right? It does. That's correct. Currently in design, we're using MPO dollars to design the road. And mm -hmm. we're actually working on securing the right of way dollars to start purchasing right away for this road project, but the construction dollars are in TS2. If it passes, though, we can bond. But you're talking out. We're probably three to four years. If you, if you were to bond it, we're still three to four years out from start construction. Five years out. Of okay. So there are. Any other questions? Not at this time. Motion. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to deny the request for a major PUD proposed 55 and up independent living senior center property located at tax map 072A 350, 349, 348, 065, 064, 063, 074, 073, 073, 072, and 071, subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission order. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Dean? Is this the last one? I'd like to make a motion to approve the request for a variance to section 7443 subdivisions with private roads for property located at tax map 041019A and a portion of tax map 041018 Subject to the conditions enumerated in the May 21st, 2020 Planning Commission report. Second. We'll step up here because I got a draw. Uh, this currently is, as designed, is a private road. Mm -hmm. To meet our standards, the lots, it's going to be a private gravel road. To meet our standards, lots have to be five acres or greater. This parcel here was not part of the original plan. When Mr. Prather approached uh, DOT about getting his permit for his uh, driveway connection here, DOT denied it based on the existing driveway for this lot here. Mm -hmm. uh, the district engineer reached out to me and asked if we would consider allowing this existing parcel to have access to that new private road so that these could, we wouldn't have a driveway conflict on Riceboro Road. Code says you cannot create a new lot based on five acres. He's not really creating a new lot, just asking for access to this private road from an existing lot. And it's 2.4, 2.4. 2 2.44, yes, sir. And is there any discussion from the neighbors? No. Any more discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. Legal matters yet to be determined after this meeting. Request for review by committee. I still don't know what that is. Public comments. Please tell him what that is at some point. I'm going to I'm going to bring one. Jeez, oh, Pete. My last page. I think that's it. Anything else we need to do? I'll just look at the last page. To make sure. uh, there's executive session, but there is none, sir. Okay. Any other motions? Mr. Chairman, I move that we adjourn.
All in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> you left hand. <laughs>